What's up, everybody? Welcome back to FSX, as requested <laughs> and uh, as I had planned. Um, the reason why I haven't had an FSX video in a while was I was just having so much fun with LCPDFR uh, and uh, and all that good stuff that I wanted to learn how to, I wanted to, or not learn, but I wanted to relearn how to fly the 727 or fly something that was a bigger airplane, uh, a jet, uh, rather than smaller airplanes that you guys have been wanting to see. So, uh, without further ado, this is the Boeing 727-200 Freighter Series by uh, the cap by uh, 727 uh, Captain is what it's called, made by Captain Sim. Uh, I just got com discombobulated there for a second because I was looking at that engine over there, and that engine is looks like a normal size 727 engine and not the Super 27, but okay. I don't think I have the RE or something uh set in the model that's not a big deal we'll fly with the normal advanced engines anywho we're going to be doing a run down to memphis today and we're going to be using vor navigation but we are doing uh the sids uh which actually they still call them sids i, I know their departure procedures dps but they still call them sids and they say climb per you know via sid and all that kind of stuff so we're going to be flying the sid which is going to be the Lindbergh four departure and we're going to head down to um it's kind of like a tran the transition I would call it would be Walnut Ridge, uh, and we're gonna head into Memphis, and we're doing the uh, what is it called the Dog Two arrival, I believe is what we're gonna be doing uh, there. So let's get all this crap put away so we can get into the airplane and and get on our way. First things first, we'll put the loader away so they can go down. They're done uh, with the load. We as you can see, we have cans in there. I've already loaded the cans. And and with this airplane, you actually can load and unload the plane. This is really, really cool. We'll hide him. We don't need him anymore. Also, when this airplane came in and I worked on it a few times, they always did go up the air stairs instead of dealing with the front cabin. Uh, it's raining here. We are using real world weather via, uh, good old active sky next. So that'll be cool. One thing that's going to be weird when we go into Memphis is that I don't have any AI traffic for FedEx. I used to have the old world of AI traffic packages, but ever since I moved to my old comp new computer, I have not been able to track that down. So if anybody knows uh, or has that world of AI installer, I would be forever in your debt. Anywho, let's go ahead and close the cargo door. Uh, they can go, let's tell them to go ahead. They can remove the, the chalks and uh, we'll close the air stairs. How about that? Close the air stairs, and let's head inside the airplane uh, where it's not raining and uh, get underway. All right, so inside of the 727, you can see uh, not a lot's changed other than um, I do have my presets uh, for Easy Dock, so we can easily access things we need to access. There's a flight engineer's panel at the bottom and on the, on the top. Uh, I want to make sure the cooling doors are open right now, which they are. The packs, we can turn those off before engines start. So let's go ahead and kill those now. Let's kill the two packs. Uh, essential power needs to be on APU. I don't know why we didn't have that. So that's a, it was an issue. Uh, and essential synchronization lights right here. Uh, it's like for this frequency thing. And I ever since I reinstalled this, I didn't have the problem I had in the past as APU panel uh, that I had in the past of uh, losing avionics. So that's a very good thing. Um, but the first things first is I'm going to open up here on my phone. And I'm going to do this with you guys. I'm going to put, put, put the PDF file up in front of you so you can see it as well. Uh, we're going to be opening the Lindbergh. Uh, Lindbergh for departure. Okay. If the phone wants to open it up for me. So I have this myself. Here we go. The Lindbergh for departure. As you can see, you just got a whole bunch of lines, right? And at the top right, you can see... There's the little lines that indicates the airport of St. Louis. And you can say, see the St. Louis VO, VOR, looks like a Vortac actually, on the outside of that. And that's STL. We're going to be using 117.4. So first things first, let's put that in the box on VHF navigation. Let's put 117.4 in here. 17 and 4. And it'll give us instant uh, DME. As you can see down there, see how it says down here on nine and nine on our HSI. That means that it, we are nine miles to the VOR. So as you can see on our little chart, we're going to fly to that VOR and we're going to make a left turn and we're going to be using, we're going to be going down to Walnut Ridge. So we're going to turn left of a heading 184 and fly the outbound radial of 184 off of the St. Louis VOR. Uh, and we're going to, if we do that for 40 miles, we'll hit Sejoy intersection 
And then another 60 miles after that, we'll hit uh, Myers. So that's a total of 100 miles. We'll hit Myers, and then we'll make a right turn to heading 188. And for 67 miles to, uh, to Walnut Ridge. From there, we switch over, and we'll use the other page, which will be for our um, arrival into uh, Memphis, which we're going to be using the um, dog to arrival and I'll put that up too when we get closer to that so first things first we've got the doors closed we can assure that uh, let's go ahead and turn our beacon light on so they know we're ready to start our engines uh, we have the packs already turned off so let's go ahead and double check all of our stuff over here uh, hydraulic system pumps engine pumps a and B's are off uh, da, 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 da. Well, they're on on A's. B's are on as well. That's kind of weird. Okay, whatever. We'll we'll deal with it as we, as we we get through it. Okay, uh, packs are off. Engine bleeds currently are all on. APU bleeds are all we need right now. We don't even need the engine bleeds right now. We just need the APU bleeds. So yeah, let's do that because it's one and three open, two left and right close. So let's go ahead and fire up the engine. So to do that. We simply go to our overhead panel here, uh, like so, and we'll start engine three first. So we go to ground start for that, and we monitor our engine, like so, and we will bring fuel, introduce fuel into three right about here, and bring it up into the idle position, and it'll pop on, like so. There we go. Engine surges. That's a problem in FSX. So this is the job of the uh, first officer, by the way, in this airplane is to start the engines like this. Starting to, turning to, wait for it to spool up. It needs to get about 15, almost to 20% in one before we add the uh, fuel. So there's about 20, add it in like that. Looks good. There's engine two. We close it and we open engine three. While we're doing that, let's go ahead and arm the, um, the lights, the emergency lights. Wait for this guy to spool up, as you can see. Um, wait for it to get to about 20 and one. We're about right there. Up we go. Each T rising, oil pressure rising, and start valve is closed. Awesome. So that's all we got to do. Let's uh, go ahead and turn our weather radar on. We will need that today as it is raining. Uh, let's go into test mode while we're doing that. Uh, and we'll set our stab trim for about five units for takeoff, like so. And we'll do a flap of 15 today. So let's put that in flap 15. And the flaps and the indicator there are going as they should. All right, let's go ahead and turn that on. And let's bring our range down to about mm, tw 40, 20 miles. We're going to be doing WXA, weather avoidance. Uh, and for now, we'll just leave the tilt where it is. All right, we're not doing IFR clearance. We're just going to be flying the uh, the, the sit and then the arrival to star um, as well. So we don't have to worry about that. We can turn our packs on. And engine bleeds will be one and three open, two left and right. One and three open, two left and right should be closed, I believe. Yes. So one and three open, two left and right are closed. Packs are on. Cooling doors, we can close those guys up. We don't need those. Those are only for when they're on the ground. Um, and what else? We need to close these guys. So we have power to the airplane off of those gens. And let's run it off a of gen one for now. Actually, gen two. We'll run it off a of gen two. And then we'll keep an eye on that with gen two. That looks happy. APU can be shut off now. We don't need you anymore. And you can see the exhaust temperature going down from there. My God, it's a big frame jump when we do that. <laughs> Let's call up ground and just, let's just, oh, uh, there probably be IFR, so I just want to, actually, you know what? Let's just hear the ATIS real fast. Foxtrot. 131 at 14. 2993, and they're using 12, so we'll be using, you know, 12 left or so. Uh, I have a feeling they won't, they'll deny us because of IFR conditions, but we can try. Yeah, 
Okay. They want us on, down to one, two, right? We can do that. It's easy enough. I just rather do that so we don't run into anybody. All right, taxi lights coming on. All righty, so we've been cleared over to that runway. Let's go ahead and give us some power and get on out of here. All right, we're taking uh, technically Charlie right now. I know they want us on Delta, so we're going to just get a little further down the line here, and then we'll make a right on Delta to Delta, and then make a left and take Delta down. That way we're not in the way of all these guys uh, pushing out and getting ready to get on their way. All right, so we can double-check our flight instruments really fast. We want to be 184 on our course, so let's go ahead and get that thing set up where we want it. So 184 on our course heading since we're going to be using that VOR. And we'll need that radial. Let's give a little more power. Get down there. We were slowing up a little bit there. There we go, like so. I need a little more power than that. They usually use a lot more uh, engine two than I am right now. So 184. There we go. Three. And yeah, there's a 184 right there. So 184. As you can see, that line is on the top side of that dial that means that when we take off we'll just make a right turn we'll intercept that heading we'll follow on to that line and we'll be on heading 184 outbound radial from the st louis vor so what does that mean we're taking off on one two right that doesn't mean we have to make a left turn and fly over the vor and then like you would in like you know ga flying it doesn't uh, i mean you wouldn't really have to anyway you just we're just gonna make a right turn and then we'll intercept the heading um We'll intercept that outbound radial just by making a right turn off of one, two, right. So that's just, that's our plan of action here so far. And you guys don't have to tell me. I know that the uh, strobes are on right now. That's because they are linked to the beacon light on this airplane. So I normally wouldn't turn strobes on before I get on the runway. But in this case, we don't really have a choice. There's a baby bus over there. Boy, just getting chewed frame rates here right now. I don't... There's a problem with the, uh, the Captain Sim 727 is I just don't get good frame rates with it. I mean... I get 30 something with everything else, but with this, it's just like in the 20s or, but we're also at a, you know, a detailed airport and with heavy skies, uh, you know, that doesn't help anything at all. So almost down to the end of the runway. We'll talk to you then. All right, we're headed down here at the end of the runway, so let's go ahead and monitor tower on 118.5, and uh, we'll go ahead and ask them for clearance for takeoff. We'll be, we'll be ready to go. And we're clear for takeoff. Cool. Clear for takeoff. One, two, right for 216. And landing lights will come on. We'll double track everything over here. We can turn our wing light on for extra visibility. On the way out, we don't need the wheel well light, wheel well light on for personnel because we don't need to do that. So we're almost here to the end of the runway. We'll line up and we'll get on our way to Memphis, ladies and gentlemen. Lining up on the runway now, and we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and set our takeoff thrust. We'll just pull them up first, make sure all three of them are looking good in the green, and they are. And set takeoff power. And back a little bit right there, like so. Takeoff power set. We push our uh, nose forward, or elevator forward. 
has to keep make sure the um it's gonna be keeping the nose wheel on the uh on the ground firmly until we want it to raise up into the air so once we cross that there's 80 knots so we're cross checking that with the first officer 100 knots v one's around 132 today about 131 with this weight there's 120 and v1 rotate like so v2 there's uh gear coming up flying up this way till about 2,000 feet or so, and then we'll make our turn. We'll clean the flaps up as well as we get closer to that. Waiting for our handoff from these guys. This sounds like they already did, so that's cool. There we go. There's the middle marker on the out. 2,000 feet. Let's go ahead and make our right turn, and let's intercept our heading of 184 for the, VO, for the outbound radio of that VOR. And let's go ahead and set our altitude alerters. Keep an eye on our vertical speed here. We're in the soup, so we gotta watch instruments today. Let's put our vertical speed. Let's go to 15,000 initially. It's about 2,000 or so there. That was not what we want, but let's get to 15,000 here. Clean our flaps up. a nice easy 20 degree turn nothing really heavy no need for it and flaps up flaps and running flaps up completely there we go cleaning them up let's get the, on the intercepting heading for this vor here like so i want to do about a 15 degree intercept for 184 so we're looking good almost about right here since we're only 13 miles from the VOR, it won't be too hard. It won't be too hard of a turn, you know what I mean? Man, we're climbing like a banshee, aren't we? Let's pull some power back. Keep an eye on our VSI. There we go. Looking better. We can turn on, kill our uh, taxi lights. Don't need those on. This guy's starting to clear up a little bit for us. Have a look down there. You can see the, some rain off to our right, but not on our path we're going. So it looks like it's gonna clear up on the way down to Memphis. That's kind of cool. We're not using the autopilot yet, we will. It's an old Sperry uh, autopilot system, so it's a dinosaur. It's not like one of the newer autopilot systems and it doesn't make your life easy, so. And there's no auto throttles in this airplane, so we always manage that. So we're running five miles. So just keeping an eye on that needle. Once that needle starts moving, we'll start tracking it to the left and follow it through. Move my view over this way a little bit more. Maybe a little more centered. Up on. Let's get up on the horns. There we go. That's pretty cool. That cloud layer right there as we climb out of St. Louis. Man, that, I'm just getting killed by frame rates. So let's fly the airplane and worry about that stuff later. <laughs> Still maintain the speed as we come through here. Maintain that 250 knots below 10,000 feet. We're trying not to speed. Keep an eye on our HSI, waiting for that needle to turn to the left so we can fly onto that radial. One nine miles from the St. Louis VR right now. And a little bit of turbulence on our way up, as I, I feared we probably would right around in this area. So let's keep a little more back pressure. Now, one thing I did with this airplane, if you own it and you know the trim is really, really, really touchy on it, is uh, I went into the elevator trim effectiveness in the aircraft config file. It was at 1.0, so I changed it to 0 0.5. Uh, that way it won't fly around on you so much. Um, and if you have any problem with any airplane in FSX with uh, that issue of the trim just being real pitchy, you can go in the aircraft config file, go into like the flight tuning uh, part of it section and uh, look for that uh, p uh, elevator pitch or trim or whatever it is and change that value from 1.0 to like 0 0.5 or something along them lines. We're past 10,000 feet. We can increase to climb uh, speed and turn our lane lights off as well. There's our needle moving. 
I'm gonna wait for it to get a little more to the left and then we'll turn on to it. And we're gonna fly with it. We don't wanna chase the needle, we wanna fly on it. So we're getting closer to that, intercepting that uh, radial. That's why I like these shallower ones. If, if we were to do like a 20 degree or more, uh, well actually we're kind of almost a 20 degree angle, but anything over a 20 degree angle, we would be chasing that needle a lot more than we need to, so. That's the reason for that. Still hitting some uh, bumps as we climb our way up. So I'm gonna wait for that needle. You see how slow that needle's moving. I want it to get onto the airplane and then we'll start the turn. Uh, maintaining, uh, keeping our scan on our instruments as well as we climb out of this suit. So we can do about a five degree turn. We don't need to do anything really more than that and turn on uh, this radial with it. Because we're 28 miles away, it's not really a sensitive needle. Still trying to get on here this way. Now let's hold about here for a minute and then we'll turn again. Oh baby. Let's uh, refer our chart here really fast. And we can see we're gonna be 60, it's 40 miles to Sejoy, which we're almost to Sejoy. All right, let's make our turn now onto that radial. So let's turn a heading of 184, and at 40 miles we'll be at Sejoy intersection. Sejoy, or whatever you wanna call it. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. It's an interesting looking updraft right here. All right, let's lower all the wings level a little bit here. Kind of just slowly turn on to it. Altitude alert, one to go. Or right, we're already past that. It's just letting us know we were over that. Which we're climbing to a flight level of, oh, three, let's go three, three one zero today. I'm not really sure. Maybe 29,000. I don't think we need to go anything really higher than that. All right, let's, mm, still navigating here. We're not using the autopilot yet, which we will now. Some captains will fly these things up to about 18,000 feet or so. Um, we're gonna use the Sperry Autopilot System. I'll show you how shitty it is. We'll open it up right here. One thing we'll do is we'll engage the aileron and elevator, and then we're gonna roll our heading around here to where we want it. Uh, and once we do that, we can activate it to do a heading hold. Right now, it's just gonna maintain this one. So let's go to about right, let's do about right here. Heading select selected. And now to go up, we would pull down on this little dial up here and then to go forward, we go down for the pitch, as you can see. So we wanna climb, actually we're doing pretty decently right now. So let's wait till we level off and see what the VSI is gonna do before we make any changes on the autopilot. I'm just using the autopilot to get where I wanna go right now. So we're, we're past Sajoy now at 42 miles. We're two miles past that. We wanna go to a total of, I think it's 60, right? Yeah. What is my phone doing? No, 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 no. Okay, I don't know what it's doing, but whatever. Yeah, it was uh, it was 40 to Sejoy, 60 total to Myers after this. So, or yeah, to be 60 more miles after this. So 100 total to get to Myers before we make our adjustment to a different uh, heading. So let's get to that 100 mile mark. One more little tick over here on the heading to get it right on course. And we're looking good. Let's pop over here and have a look at our weather radar. Not seeing anything painting out that far, so let's increase our range to about 80 miles. And we'll tilt this down a little bit to paint. Okay, we have a little bit of stuff in front of us. And what we would use that for is to know where um, possible turbulence would be and all that if we were a passenger flight. but. We aren't flying passengers, we're flying cargo. Let's go about 40 miles on that. Have a look at uh, what's below there. A little bit up there ahead. So nothing too major. Uh, everybody's happy there. Uh, we'll worry about all that stuff later as far as changing over the DM or the, you know, the VORs for DME. 
I want to go a little more to the right. I want to get this thing lined up perfect. So in real life, ATC wouldn't bitch at us. We're up level 220. Having a nice, healthy climb out. Uh, and no problems. getting a line back up we're about 94 miles now so almost a 100 we'll make our turn to the right and head down to Myers uh, or we'll be at Myers so we'll head towards Walnut uh, Ridge there um, I decided we're gonna go up to about flight level eh, 320 just to be in safe of all these uh, what could be up here in these clouds I'm not really sure I saw it on the weather radar so we're gonna go out to flight level 320 today all right, so I decided we're gonna go to flight level 310, just uh, just in case we have any more rough stuff up up ahead. I didn't see it too much on the radar left anymore, so I think 310 will be a nice uh, nice altitude for us today. So we're still climbing away to that. We're uh, we have the altitude alert now, letting us know we're a thousand within that range. So let's open up our Sperry and let's start pitching this sucker down a couple times. Let's bump it twice. And you can see our VSILs fall. We'll make a lot um, more, our ascent will be a lot more um, shallow. So when we hit, uh, apply our altitude hold switch, it won't be too crazy. Where's 106, we need to make our right turn to heading one, uh, what is it, one something. It was 188, that's what it was. Five, six. so 188. Oh, shit. 188. All right. So, like so. Let's turn on 188. And we're going to intercept the Walnut Ridge. So, right now, we're going to open our Sperry back up. And altitude hold will come on at 310. For that. For flight 3. Yeah, for 310. Uh, and Walnut Ridge is 114.5. So, let's put that in the box really quick. 114.5. 14.5. Okay. All right, so not too bad. We're 55 miles from it. So let's make a right turn and intercept this guy like so. I'll make sure we, we get right on to Walnut Ridge. And with that, I'm gonna open up our dog uh, arrival. We start reviewing the dog to arrival, as you can see on the screen. Um, it is, oh, hang on a second. Turn my screen rotation off. There we go. Uh, you can see up here on the north side, uh, there's Walnut Ridge there, and we're going to be flying, once we cross over Walnut Ridge, we'll fly that 164 heading to Standing Intersection, which is 13 miles from that VOR, and continue 40 miles from Standing to uh, Dog, or sorry, 27 more miles, so it'll be a 40 total to Dog Intersection, where we make that left turn to 111 degrees, and we'll use the Gilmore VOR. I know, it sounds more confusing than it actually is, I promise you. 